Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki and welcome to session 15, Supply Chain Distribution. Uh, we just finished uh, marketing and pricing and, and uh, the next section 16 is going to be promotion. So this is a lead into our uh, uh, coming up uh, uh, discussion on, on uh, promotion. But before I promote, I have to understand the distribution chain. I have to understand the six types of utility. Uh, I have to understand uh, my position, uh, am I a retailer or am I a, a wholesaler? I have to look at the logistics of the organization. I have to look at the channel relationships and what online sites are needed, forms of non-store uh, uh, retailing. All this basically is part of our series that we'll be going that's looking at organizational uh, uh, introduction of business organizations, whether I'm a small business, a large business, or a medium business. I have to understand uh, the different dis uh, supply chain distribution because that is uh, how I get my supplies, my inventory. This is also how I sell outside uh, uh, my operation to my clientele, either to businesses or to consumers. This is also what I utilize as a marketing uh, uh, part of my integrated marketing so I could say hey my distribution my warehouses are right around the corner or they're within a 20 minute or a, a, or a half an hour uh, for my operation so I always have your products on time if I'm a pharmaceutical I could use the distribution of just in time management because every I could say hey um, I'm Abbott Labs uh, I'm right here in Waukegan so I could take care of the Lake County and Cook County you do not need to have the supply uh, uh, to keep uh, uh, a larger supply of drugs or pharmaceutical because I could deliver it within, uh, what do you call it, uh, within 24 hours. Okay, so let's go on this. You're either taking me on an online class, a face-to-face -face class, a hybrid class, or one of my workshops. So we're going to go right in here. I got this uh, in the larger. Again, you already have a a accessibility to my mind maps or my concept maps and all the material if you're in any of my paid classes. Okay. So let me just slip this. Marketing intermediaries. What the heck are market, marketing intermediaries? There are people that are in between. Organizations that assist in moving goods and services. They're in the middle of the series of the firms that distribute goods. It could be UPS. It could be the post office. It could be my own distribution system. It could be that uh, if I look at Walmart, Walmart utilizes the same distribution systems for Sam's Club. So Sam's Clubs, uh, they buy by larger uh, quantities, and they also have that uh, economies of scale because they also supply the regular Walmarts, okay? So that's what uh, intermediaries are, business to business, from business to business. We already talked about this. Business to consumer, from business to consumer. Make sure when you are taking an exam, if you're taking an exam, sometimes people play games and they'll say, see to you know, a consumer to consumer. And a lot of individuals think, hey, the internet is consumer to consumer. No, the minute you're on uh, Amazon.com and you're selling something, you take the role of a business or a, a small business on, uh, uh, that's basically selling the goods to the consumer. Okay, so we have that. Channel distribution. Now let's go some general information about the channel distribution. We'll come up here. Maybe I could just make this just leave a little bit bigger. Let's see what 300 does. Okay, perfect. So you can see that. Even with my face in there. Okay, so you got general information. What's the general information? Supply chain links, intermediaries, a group of marketing intermediaries joining together to transport store goods from producers to consumer. If I look at the, the way the author is looking at marketing intermediaries, it could be business, a, distribu a distribution, a, a distribution, distributor, a warehouse, a factory, they're all considered marketing intermediaries because we're providing a product or a service to you, okay? So don't let that confuse you. Wholesalers, there's two types of wholesalers. What are wholesalers? Uh, and if I look at wholesalers, they, they sell to businesses or institutions. They're marketing intermediaries like Rack, uh, Rack Jobbers. If you look at, if you go to Jewel, or if you go to some of the stores in the morning, you have a lot of people putting stuff on the rack, like if you're there at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and you go in there and you say, uh, hey, do you know uh, where can find a milk? And he goes, I don't work here. I, I'm uh, with uh, uh, General Motors, uh, General Mills, or I'm with the Pepsi Cola, or I'm just uh, doing this. But some of them, they kind of have a general idea. I think it's around the corner there. But see, so that offsets the cost, and that's part of the reason I use that supplier, that vendor, because electronically they could tell exactly when something is short. So when they 
fill up the truck. They know already I'm low on Frito-Lays, but I have enough regular barbecue potato chips. Because a lot of things when you're looking at the uh, technology, my suppliers or my vendors a lot of times are connected instantly. So when you're scanning that item in the uh, store or, bu or buying something in any of the stores and they scan it, you pay out, that's already sending information to, uh, uh, to my supplier saying, uh, we're behind uh, after so many units are sold, you should restock that. So remember, none is done by chance, it makes it easier for use and resale of other items, some retailers to consumers, two types of warehouse, one just a storage and the other one does distribution. If I look at a warehouse, a lot of times we have the storage and the dis distribution is by, it's, it may be underneath the procurement uh, uh, or supply chain from a company, but if I'm a smaller business, I may have a storage and then basically UPS comes in, uh, and uh, picks up from my storage or I may have both uh, as, uh, aspects of the operation. Remember, if a company is utilizing and has control of both the storage and the distribution, something that Walmart uh, has, they could contain the cost. Now, if I have my storage where I keep it so I can maintain it because I'm paying the rent and I know the, what I have uh, to make sure it's there, but the distribution is UPS or the post office, I have to depend on them. So if they raise their rates, I have to raise my rates, um, okay? And same thing, there's some companies that all they do is do storage. The, uh, I'm a small business, and I go into, uh, 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 if I look at... Um, uh, 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 if I look at some of those storage uh, units that they sell to consumers, uh, you know, if you got too much, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, you don't have any uh, garage space or anything else, you could uh, rent a storage spot. Now, this could be considered also a storage thing. You could store it. You know, they sell more than just a little cubits if you've got a bigger business, because I know some of my uh, uh, individuals I work with that are, have small businesses, they have big garage storages where they keep, just keep the material, because they buy it, I remember, I need the storage, because a lot of times at a business, I buy it in six months before I actually sell the inventory, and sometimes I buy it because I get a, a good deal on the inventory, as long as I don't think it's going to be uh, outdated, like jeans or something else, like blue jeans, you know, Levi jeans, usually uh, most of the styles you get the basic Levi jeans, you're always the same sell uh, year around you could sell it so I would store it if I get a good price on the items and then later on sell it like I look at the cost of storage it remember I bought the inventory I'm not making any money off of it I'm storing it so for every uh, how much I'm paying for the storage you got to divide it by the units that it uh, are being uh, stored there. Plus, they got to carry insurance. What if this gets watered down? What if someone steals it? So there's a lot. Or what if it's something that the style's out of style by the time I'm ready to sell it? So storage is good. But remember when we talked about uh, we're going to be going, uh, uh, we're going to be talking about accounting where they go uh, lifeo in, a uh, lifeo out is uh, you know inventory turnaround. So sometimes you don't have too much of an inventory if you're being benchmarked. Uh, against the inventory. Materials handling is inside the, the movement uh, uh, of a warehouse, no storage. Uh, drop shippers, production to a uh, buyer. If you look a lot of the catalog stores uh, uh, that will send you the catalog, when you buy the merchandise, it does not come from the uh, catalog company, let's say Women Within or whatever. I'm just making some names of some catalogs or LL Bean. They may have it at the warehouse, so basically it's just going to. Uh, uh, or the manufacturer, he sells it, he or she sells it to uh, send it to you directly. This way, they don't have to worry about the inventory. The manufacturer, he or she's not in the business of uh, uh, selling to customers, just making it as a as a manufacturer. But they'll store it for them and they'll ship it directly one item at a time at a higher cost to uh, uh, the catalog company. Okay, when I'm looking at this, so wholesalers, retailers, now, you know, uh, sell to ultimate customers' use. Category killer stores like Toys R Us. When I look at Toys R Us, I could go to Walmart, I could go to Target, I could go to Kmart, and I could find a Barbie doll. And usually the Barbie dolls may be, uh, I may have a limited amount of uh, items to the Barbie dolls, accessories. Or I may only have, if I'm in a predominantly uh, Caucasian uh, uh, neighborhood or European, I have more white types of Barbie dolls. Huh? more in the Hispanic uh, area, I have more of the flip side, more of a his, uh, Latino or, or Mexican or, uh, type of Barbie doll. But if I look at Toys R Us, they usually have the whole product line more than any other stores because that's why they could keep the cost. The cost is a little bit higher, but if I go to Toys R Us, for example, I know I'll find my item. They will have it there because that's their whole uh, business of toys. Where Walmart, Target, or some of the other stores, they just have a department or a smaller 
section that only deals with toys for kids, okay? And then they compete against price, service, entertainment, location, selection, and internet stores. So those are all my retail, non-retailing stores. You know, this is all part of the distribution system. I got the farmer, the warehouser, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, the, in the sense of a manufacturer or processing plant, and then I uh, finally get it to me as a store to the end customer. I have e-commerce or electronic retailing. If you look at, used to have Amazon uh, uh, doing a lot of that coming in. Used to be, uh, uh, you know, Google's coming in and uh, doing some selling. So there's other people that you know, eBay has basically is all electronic. But there's other individuals coming and say, hey, we can make some money. We're already in the internet business. You know, so that when we talked earlier, this is a horizontal type type of uh, 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 integration, we could do it, let's go for it. And direct uh, sales and marketing. And then you also you have your agents and uh, broker. Brings buyers and sellers together, never takes title uh, to the goods, assists and negotiates. Look at your realtor or your car. The brand new car dealer, when you look at it, you're the first owner. But he or she has to buy the car and put like 30 miles or 50 miles, just put it on the truck, off the truck, do a real quick test run. But they basically never take ownership. So you always have it. When you go to Walmart, you buy the computer that's off the shelf. It's from Hewlett Packard, even though it says Walmart or Costco on there, you're the initial buyer. They're just the intermediaries. They're not taking possession of the uh, of the goods. They're just uh, uh, the person in between. Okay, so that's what we have. So we've got that six types of utilities. Now let's look at the utility. Uh, the intermediaries create utilities. You know, so if I wanted to, uh, let's, let's look at this one. Now this is all part of your marketing. What kind of utility you create uh, to your consumer? If I you know, uh, changes raw materials into useful products, remember utilities. Uh, producers generally provide a form of utility. Starbucks makes coffee the way the customers want it. Levi Strauss transforms them into clothing. Now I can make my own coffee. I don't have to go to Starbucks, but they're taking they're taking the coffee bean, everything I could buy. I could buy a can of coffee, I could buy my creamer, my latte, mix it all up, grind it if I wanted, and they could do it all for me. But for a higher price, five, six, seven, eight dollars, they'll do it for me, and it comes when I want it. I don't get the mess, and so people are willing to pay for that. Now, so that's form. So if your business has something that's changing something, changing a form, that's going to be part of your marketing. Now, time makes products available when customers want them. Many Walgreens, and I use that for example, are open 24/7. So part of their, the part of the retail, the part of the distribution that the pharmaceuticals send it to the Walgreens, and then from Walgreens, you as a customer come in there. But there's other stores. Walmart uh, has a pharmacy. Uh, Jewel Osco may have a pharmacy. But some of the pharmacies are open 24/7, similar to the hospital. That no matter what, you know that that pharmacy is open to have your goods. And that's basically time. And uh, you know, uh, if do I buy it online? I could get it quicker, I don't have to leave, but how long do I have to wait? Time is a cost. So if I say I got it now or I deliver it 24 hours, you know, I could buy something online and it says it takes three days. Normal uh, shipping comes three days. I need it today. Sure, we'll do it for today, but you're paying $70 and they'll ship it the same day and hand deliver it to you on that same day, but you're paying for that cost because time is, uh, uh, is a utility and it's something that's part of the distribution chain. If you want it faster, you pay for uh, uh, more for it. Okay, now place adds values to products. Get something to drink. Add values to products by placing them where people want them. Banks place ATMs at convenient location. Pepsi is available on campus and a vending machine. So where you locate it makes a big difference. If you're closer to your customer base, so you know. You know, a lot of businesses are, you know, online is, is good. You know, I could be anywhere in the world, the United States. But if I'm open up a face-to-face, -face, a regular traditional store, I try to be close to my customer base. If I'm buying a car, I'm buying a car. A lot of people may buy just General Motors or Ford product because the dealership's right there. So, you know, if something breaks down or if i got to drop it off for maintenance, it's right there. So that's a plus. Not always. You know, I may be a, 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 a what do you call it, a, a Lexus type individual and I'll drive the furthest uh, way just to get a Lexus or a Subaru and it may not be closer. But a lot of times, lot of, some people, if it's just a car, I'm looking at just a basic car, it gets me from one to the other, got the warranty, everything else, I'll uh, buy the one that's closer to me. Okay, now possession now utility helps transfer ownership from one party to another, including providing credit. So if I'm looking at possession, uh, pay for McDonald's with your Visa card. Car dealer offers loans to the buyers, activities, installation, 
guarantees, follow up, renting, do not want to own, delivery, railroad. So if I'm looking at how close I can get it delivered to me. And if I look at possession and say, hey, buy now. Oh, I don't have the cash. You have, Well, the sale ends at 9 o'clock. You got a debit card or a credit card. So possession is anything I could do to get the individual to make the commitment that he or she is going to uh, receive the goods in a, uh, in a timely manner. Now the second time, I'll guarantee that you'll get it in uh, in two days. Uh, you know, I mean, some people they want possession, but they want uh, they don't want a house. They just need a place to live in, so they basically will do some renting. Now the other thing, delivery. Railroad is the number one. It delivers 30 to 40 percent of all goods because it's less expensive. It could take the bulk. The next one is motor vehicles, 25 percent and up. But you figure uh, motor vehicles, the gasoline prices go up, the diesel prices goes up. Uh, uh, what happens? The cost of delivering from that intermediate goes up. So tra uh, a lot of trucks will come from one point to the railroad. They'll piggyback on the railroad and they'll deliver to the distillation. Another truck will take it off and piggyback to your location. But if you want the delivery from one point to the other point, you have to pay for that trucker, then it's going to cost you. In the winter time, you know, there's delays, there's traffic, there's some accident. So a lot of things could delay your sh uh, your shipment. Water is, you know, uh, is, is to the pipeline. And pipeline, like oil, you get an error is the most fastest, but the most expensive. You know, anyone who flaw and you look at your bag to weigh how much you weigh, because the airplane is limited by the capacity of how many people they could put in. It's also limited by the size of the items they could put in, depends on different planes, could put in, put in larger items. Plus, they're also uh, 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 restricted by the weight. The plane needs so much weight. If it has too much weight, it won't take off because it doesn't have the thrust that it's needed. Okay, so we have that information. Information. The Internet is my information. You know, I'm not talking about buying a pop or anything, but even information. If I look at uh, the government saying that every candy bar got to say everything that's in there, I'm looking, man, I don't know half of these things because they look like I should have took chemistry to understand. Some of the stuff it tells you how much is real, how much is uh, 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 artificial, how much fat, how much saturated uh, fat, anything I want. Also, the Internet provides information. When I'm looking at one computer or one smartphone, so another smartphone, I could do a comparison before I even look at it. What's this? See, you know, a lot of times you go to a salesperson or if you go to the, uh, to the store to buy the product, I may say you're intimidated. I'm not thinking straight. Here I have a general idea of which one I have and what I need and which ones are uh, comparable, which ones carry the same product or the same software, and what am I getting for money. It's easier to compare what are the uh, warranties uh, or, uh, and, you know, customer review on that. So I get all that from the information. So as a business owner, I have to make sure my site has all the information that my consumers want because otherwise, if I don't find it on the site, I just Google it and say, uh, uh, give me the ranking of so-and-so iPhone versus a Samsung. Boom. And I'm going to get people that are techies. That's what they do to provide information. And they'll tell me the ranking. And they'll tell them their personal opinion because they're supposed to be the experts. And I look at one or two and I have a general idea. And then look at the review of the individual. And service, uh, okay, service utility provides service during and after a sale. If you look at most new cars and we're paying forty, fifty thousand for a car, let's say for the two, first two years, we'll do the oil change and we'll do all the maintenance for you because you're paying such a high end <coughs> on that. Teaches customers how to best use the products. You know, sometimes they have, uh, uh, if you don't know how to download, uh, uh, like my daughter uh, wasn't sure, or some students don't know how to download information from their, uh, uh, let's say, Samsung into the iPhone, you take it in there, and they, uh, the, the reps will show you here's how you do it. They'll show you online how you set up your own um, uh, how to connect to the uh, to the internet and do it automatically. And college placement offices help students find a job. So that's a service, okay? And so we're at sir, you know, those are my six types of uh, uh, services, right? I got them all. Very good. Okay. And the next thing, retailers. What are retailers? General information. Retailers approximately are, and this is according to uh, the most current, uh, I think it's from 2013. Approximately 2.3 million retailers in the U.S., not including websites. Retailers in the U.S. employ over 11 million people. I, uh, that's a pretty good number. I think it's like 400 or 100 million in the U.S., if I'm mistaken. Uh, sells to the ultimate consumer's use only. I'm not selling business to business where they're using it and making a component. Retailers sell straight to the users, to me, the end users, and operate in many different structures. If you look at Walmart or Costco's, they basically, early in the morning, 
till 10 o'clock, they only sell in business to business. You got to be a business to business member to go in there and use your tax uh, tax uh, uh, ID number for whatever. After 10 o'clock, when businesses are open up their own businesses, then they're open up to sell to the consumers and they, they turn from a warehouse to a basically a, a retail operation. Top line retailers are eBay, uh, online retails, eBay, Amazon, Walmart's number one, pretty good. Target, next select, and when you say top line, because they do a lot of movement of uh, individual CDs and it gives them so many uh, 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 hits or activities uh, uh, versus some of the other ones. Because you're looking at each item you sell. So if you got a thousand million of uh, a disc, you have more activity going on. Fastest growing retail categories, video games. Sports and fitness, home and garden, furniture, event tickets, and customer electronics. Category killer, killer, we talked about those already. Okay, so we're pretty good on this. Now, retail distribution, real quickly, strategies for retail distribution. If I look at intensive distribution system, it basically puts as many retail uh, outlets as possible, including vending machines. You look at vending machines, they're everywhere. Go to school, go to a lot of stores, every floor is a vending machine. That's intensive. If I look at Walmart, they're like rabbits. Every corner, every neighborhood, there's a, not Walmart, a, a Walgreens. Uh, I got stuck with the W. They're everywhere. Very intense. Okay, now the other ones you're looking at is selective. When I look at selective, use only for a, per, a preferred group available uh, retailers in areas. So if I'm looking at certain selective, I may have, let's say, uh, the vitamin shop. Or I may have... Um, uh, for lack of better words, uh, Jiffy Lube. Maybe they're, they're, they're around, but not in every corner. You know, they're, they're dispersed a little bit uh, uh, differently. Very selective on that. Exclusive use for one retail outlet in a given geographic area. Uh, I'm trying to think of which one would be exclusive. I, I was trying to think of uh, uh, Barrington Coat Flat, uh, 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 company, uh, store. They're basically one big geographic. You don't see too many all over like you would... Um, uh, McDonald's or something else, you'd see them basically very uh, 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 retail outlet in a certain geographic area. Okay? Doing good on this one? This one's pretty quick. I mean, the, the, the whole thing I want you to remember out of this one, the difference between wholesale retailers, but I'll look in these six utilities because this is also, uh, I'm open at a certain time my business, my place is a good location, and I, I, I let the customers come in and uh, uh, use a debit card or credit card or I have layaway for them. I provide them information and online and I service the customers. This is all, if you're marketing, this is all businesses are using uh, all this at the end. Remember, the customers are looking at us. Look, they could go make their own clothes. They could go right to the factory. They could go right to the farm. They're looking at us as a retailer that we've got all the connections. If you look in, uh, at some of the highlights, uh, uh, the retailer does all the connections for the consumer, so it makes it easier, and we provide all of these utilities, and the more we provide, the better we are, okay? So I've got retail distribution, I do this one, uh, okay, uh, so we got, uh, uh, okay, we did this one, sorry, okay, uh, forms and non-store retailing. If I look at some of forms and non-store retailing, there's the various different ones, vending machine, Kazakhs, uh, carts, dispense uh, uh, convenience goods when customers deposit sufficient uh, uh, funds. Okay, easy. We've got that one. We've got electronic uh, uh, vending, uh, retail and selling goods and services to the ultimate customer consumers over the internet. Telemarketing, sales of goods and services, Viva phone. The telemarketing, you know, they sell a good job, maybe insurance or something else. But if I want to buy a code product, I got to see it. I'm a visual. Will it fit me? Well, you know, uh, you know what I mean? So they're basically more, if I look at telemarketing, more for a service. If I look at telemarketing, or uh, direct me to something else. Are you interested in uh, joining a club? Are you interested in uh, uh, attorney service? Are you interested in dental service? So telemarketing has their things. Most individuals want to see the product, at least a picture of it. So that's what internet takes. Direct selling, selling goods and services, consumer, customers uh, in their homes or workplaces. So direct selling, uh, if you look at business to business, Motorola does not come to my computer shop. Motorola expects me, the salesperson, to come to their business. Now some businesses, if I'm a computer repair individual, some people may be having that open up. I may not have a shop, but I'll come to your shop. They have doggy, uh, uh, grooming dogs will come to your house because you know, you're a business person. Uh, 
your window shield is broken, so it's kind of like a direct sale. They come to your location, and you know, uh, you got door to door salesmen who come to your, uh, to your shop. So that's direct selling, okay? The old vacuum cleaner, you don't see that anymore. Multi level independent salespeople and contractors. I could have my own sales force, but I'm small. I may contract out my selling activities to a company or telemarketer that also phones up to make that uh, uh, to qualify the customer. This is another thing telemarketers does to do some prospecting to see, hey, can I find someone? I pay them and they give me a list of potential customers uh, uh, to follow up with. And, or then I, you know, so they're like a, a, a outside uh, contractors or a higher contractor. If I look at insurance agency, not one that, or even go to some of the stores and they have uh, AT&T, Verizon, they have all the different carriers and different kind of phones. They're basically selling the phones, but they are uh, contractors for Verizon, for uh, AT&T, and they get a certain percentage uh, for every contract or every customer they sign up. So they kind of find that balance. It's not the same as using your own workforce. Direct marketing, like it or not, is any activity that directs links, directly links manufacturers or intermediaries to the ultimate customer. That's direct marketing. Okay, let's get uh, online sites. What do they need? Important features of e-commerce websites. I don't care what business you have. You got to have a website. Where do you find the information? I get a receipt. Uh, here's my uh, website. Any problem? Call the website. You want to win twenty dollars uh, certificate? Do my customer uh, survey on the website. Why on the website? This is another way I can attract a customer. Once they log in, I get their email. I can start not spamming them, but sending them because they already like my operation coupons. You know, uh, McDonald's does that or, or uh, on that. Establish the brand, users reviews, professional site and design, alternative payments. Remember, I'm a small business medium. They don't never been to my shop. I'm gonna be working on my garage out of the basement, but my website looks top of the notch. It looks like man, this you know I may be standing there in front of this big building. It could be a building I'm just visiting, or my office is a little corner. They don't know I own that at all. They just see man, that is a big site. And the site, if it looks professional, then the, you know and a lot of sites you could get people when you. Uh, uh, for a fee, to help you do the sites, to update the site, they have templates for a lot of the site. So you come across professional, and they'll say, "I like that person. He must be a big business." Cause look how professional his site, his website is. Don't underestimate the web. A lot of people, when you're looking back here, remember we're looking at this uh, uh, information types of utilities, finding out things about individuals. They're going to go on the internet first to find out about you. What are your hours? Where are your location? Uh, what's your product line? Uh, you know, what goods you're selling? I can tell right away if it's a small business or a large business just by what they're selling. A little, little, uh, little site, few goods, it's not too big of an operation. You want to come across and from learning from marketing bigger than you are, coming across at an image that they think you're an established company. And, and you are. I'm not trying to say that. But remember, people. some people say, oh, they're too small. I don't like to do a business to take care of it. You come across. That's what makes the Internet uh, against the large big box gives you a fair plane, uh, 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 plane to, uh, to play on. Okay? Uh, channel relationships. If I look at this, there are four systems. Corporate distribution systems. And if I look at that, let me just move it over here. It says one firm owns all the organizations in the channel. Goodyear, Sherwin Williams, they move. They, they control from manufacturing to the distribution. You know, some they buy the paint, so the supply chain. They put it to the factories. They own the trucks from the factories. They go to the warehouse. From the warehouse, they distribute it to the individual uh, stores. Contractual distributions like Subway, Franchise Systems, McDonald's, Subway, Sonic. Basically, I'm a franchisee. I use their uh, their foods because all foods has to be the same consistency, same hamburger meat, same kind of buns. So any McDonald's I go into, everything tastes the same. And I utilize their distribution system. I'm at the end, so I buy from them and they take care of it. Whole, uh, wholesale sponsored chain, IGA or Ace High, uh, Hardware. If I look at them, they're more like a cooperative, but they use the, uh, a distribution system to their, all their uh, uh, co-ops. Okay? And then associate grocers are true uh, value. All right, so you've got that. Administrative distribution. Exists when producers manage all the marketing functions at the retail level. Example, Kraft Foods and Ralph Lauren, you know, for the hair, they control the whole... Uh, 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 they, they not only control the distribution system, they are the administrators or the keepers of the distribution system. 
Okay, what's the supply chain? A link of activities to move goods and services from the source of raw materials to the ultimate customers in different stages. Supply chain management, if I'm looking at, is the process. Who's controlling the supply chain? You know, I order, but I've got goods coming in. Look, when I look at the supply chain, when you look at just-in-time inventory, and we did the operation a, a little while back, I don't need to paint. Look, uh, uh, let's make something where people could visualize this. I am going to build a house. In my supply chain, I don't want the wood too early because I need the foundation. You got to dig it up. I got mud all over. So the part of the supply chain, when do I get the wood delivered? I want to deliver once the foundation is in, and do I deliver all the wood for the whole house? No, because it's going to get ruined. Someone's going to be theft. I deliver just enough to frame it out. Then later on, somebody else will deliver, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, the, the drywall on the inside and the siding on the outside and the roofing. And then somebody else is going to deliver the other parts, and then we should be working all the way through. So if I'm looking at this, I control the whole supply chain, so we're doing pretty good uh, at this. All right. Now, oops, popped up here. It takes care of the supply chain. The next one we have, I am looking at the logistics, and that's the last one. Let me just turn this off. Uh, I, I hope this larger, you know, because a lot of people are looking at it. I'm not too worried about you seeing my face, you know, because I'm always uh, in the corner here. You know, because it just gives you so you can see my expression, that I'm excited. Uh, and plus, you know who I am. You know what I mean? So, you know, who's this person behind the voice of Dr. George? You see Dr. George. Okay, let's look at the logistics, the definition. Logistics of... Formal definition. This is a quick overview. Logistics: the planning, implementing, and controlling a physical flow of materials, final goods, and related information from points of origin to points of cons uh, uh, consumption. Firms may outsource companies specializes in trade compliance to determine what is needed uh, for products and uh, to go with service. If I look at FedEx, or if I look at uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, uh, UPS, they do a lot of global. From a small business, I don't have to worry about it. I file out the paperwork. They do the shipping. They do all the, uh, the uh, going through the importing and exporting. They do through all the uh, checkpoints because that's basically their process. They do pre-process before they send it out. They come in there, and, you know. So if I get inspections to uh, some, uh, you know, coming in to make sure are the goods labeled properly, there's nothing out there. They control that for a fee. I don't have to get involved. Some companies like Walmart do uh, does it all by themselves because they've got the distribution uh, globally. That's how they work it. Inbound lo logistics brings raw materials, packaging, other goods and service information from suppliers to producers. Remember, suppliers also a uh, revenue. They may help me with my advertising. As long as I'm being successful, I buy more from them. So there is, a, you know, they may uh, do a cooperative. They may do alliances. Even though they're not selling because indirectly I'm selling their uh, their. Uh, 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 the, the goods, uh, the raw goods, they're just converting it to the form utility and delivering it to me on time. Material handling is in, within the organization. Outbound logistics manages the flow of, of finished goods and information from business buyers to the consumer. So most retailers, you're the one who's going to do your ads, your coupons, you know, reverse logistics, brings goods back to the manufacturer because of defects or recycling. If I look at now, look at some, let's look at L.L. Beam. I use those for example. How does L.L. Beam get the material? I order it, and I know where they're at, I forgot where they're at, uh, but I order it in Massachusetts if I'm mistaken. If I order it, I get it the next day. Wow! Do they ship it right away? No. Uh, what happens is uh, UPS or uh, FedEx has warehouses because LL Beam does so much activities for a fee. They're the warehouse, their logistics uh, administrator. So LL Beam knows these kind of good sweaters, ties, uh, always move. So they'll already have them there. And then when I order, FedEx basically puts an LL Beam and sends it to me. I order to LL Beam's. They get the uh, the order, they send it out, and they have it the next day. 
minimize everything else. And LL Bean pays, that's why I say free shipping because it's all local, because they pay a little bit higher price. If they pay a little bit higher price for the distribution chain, that means I'm paying a little bit higher. I remember, but I don't mind. I get it quicker in my mind. I think, hey, I got free shipping. Indirectly, nothing is free. It's embedded somehow in the car, uh, in the in the cost. And then freight forward is puts many sh small shipments together in a, to create a single large shipment that can be transported cost effectively by trade or uh, or train. So I may like a. Uh, 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 true value they buy by bulk they'll give it to the geographic area with a warehouse for true value or uh, ace hardware to co-op so everyone comes in look if you go and um, if you're buying goods at market day at your church or your uh, synagogue or your mosque or your place of worship or at your schools or your uh, non-profit organization what are they doing they're getting the shrimp the things from all over and they're basically doing it on the inside so uh, uh, I come to one location and I buy from them so that's the uh, when I look at this uh, freight forward uh, you know I mean they, they, they buy it for large quantity and me as individuals buy a little at a time so it's not a retailer they're just doing the distribution from that place to here but it doesn't make sense for me to send one uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, steak or box of steaks or potato chips or popcorn, whatever you're selling. I can send a whole bunch in one big shipment to that nonprofit or to that central location. And, you know, at the market, uh, they, uh, and they're just the organizers. And then they, they basically distribute it to everyone else. And the cost is a bit higher, but I get something I think is unique that no one else has it. Intermode shipping uses multiple modes of transportation to complete the single long distance, piggybacking, fishy backing, you know, trailers placed on boats. That kind of makes sense, fishy backing, you know. Uh, birdie backing, trailers placed on pl plane. Expensive, less expensive, uh, uh, basically the cheapest that you could get, but it takes you longer. Remember, I mean, look at the time. So that basically takes care of our supply chain. And so we'll bring it back so everyone can see it again. We're at 200. So if I'm looking at this, when I'm looking at the logistic as a manager or department, anything I'm doing, small business, medium, who controls? It could be one person. It could be you when you're by yourself. You basically are the supply chain. You look at the intermediaries or people who are winning the supply chain actually either getting me the supplies or sending it to my clients or my customers. The biggest one is just utilities. Your business is wrapped around. When I look at why would I go to a store on, if I'm buying something online, how quickly do I get it? How, you know, uh, where's the destination? If it's something overseas and I get a good price, that's a man. By the time it goes here, I'm not going to get it overnight. But they could say, hey, you're buying it from me from England. You're buying it from me from the European Union. But we've got a distribution center in the U.S. So you're buying it here. We can ship it right out here. Because he asked, where's your location? United States or, or, or Canada or Mexico or whatever country because they already got the warehouse. They may not be making it. They're still making it in the country in uh, England or France or China. But they have distribution distributors or warehouses here so they could get it right away okay all right so we got uh, that so remember these are all part of your marketing try to put those into your uh, some of your words when you're doing you know you, you need some of your uh, uh, you know so, so when you're looking at it you control this this is what a customer looks form time place possession information all this is, should be part of your integrated marketing plan somehow uh, in, included in there okay so my name is dr george machaki and this was session 15 of chapter 15 uh, uh supply chain distribution from a small business to medium this is just a general idea that as a business owner i have to know so if i want to reduce my costs i can't reduce my costs for the ultimate uh, uh cost of the product because my competitors cost is there i have to look where could i minimize instead of using ups or fedex could i use the post office Sure, sometimes they're not, the, you know, they're doing pretty good because I, I complain, I buy some uh, uh, aquarium plants and they're going to charge me, uh, UPS is like $25, it's more than I'm paying for the plant. I said, put it into priority mail. You could just zip it. Well, they're not guaranteed. You zip it, they'll be good for the two days. I've never had any problems with priority mail. Once in a while, I get it, I turn it in, I get it within the next day. I could track it, makes my life easier. I could reduce the cost and people will buy more because if I'm paying more for shipping than I'm paying for, the, unless it's a diamond, I'm paying more for shipping. My God, I just go to the regular store because if I take 
I, I get a good price here. I add the shipping together. It costs me more buying it online. You have to look at it that way. That's how the consumer is looking at it. So anything in this chain and time, how quickly I get it. If I want it next time, cost you more. If I could minimize the time and everything else. Look, look if you go to McDonald's, you could go to the drive through or Wendy's or everything else. If I see six, seven people, you know, this is to uh, change the form. Oh, it's going to take me too long. Or if I walk in, which one is faster? Usually the drive through is faster because customers are in their cars. They want to be driving. You know, if I see six cars, they're going to drive by. So they try to keep that line down to minimum of three, four P, uh, cars so individuals will wait in line. But then you don't know. If you wait in line, you got a school bus, a whole bunch of kids. You'd be like going in that line at McDonald's and waiting for a thousand people. I go, oh, my God, my time. And they look, okay, should I leave now? And then you say, if I go to the other place, it's gonna, how much time to get there? All that is a cost factor, okay? How quickly I can get the customer out. So remember, this this one is out of this whole chair, uh, session. This is your most important. The rest of them is how to reduce my expenses. Again, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and I'll see you in our next uh, 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 video session. And have a nice day. Bye.